This question here is one of the craziest 10 mark A-level trigonometry and solving differential equations. Now it's a bit of an essay, there's a lot of yapping, so I'm going to give you guys some time to read this question. Alright, now that you've read the question, let's get to it. So it says, using the result, the integral of sec k theta is 1 over k ln tan of all of that. Show the solution to cos x dy dx equals cos e, with x being 0, y equals pi is this, and that's a cheeky four marks. All right, so this first bit is just solving differential equations. So we have cos x dy dx is cos e. Now the first thing you should be doing is multiplying through by the denominator of dx to decide if you need to include brackets. But here, that is not the case because cos e is its own function. Okay, it's one term. But, can I even integrate this? The answer is no. Why? Because you can't integrate cos x with respect to y, or cos y with respect to x. So, we're going to have to backtrack a bit and say, actually, this is not working out for me. Uh, I'm just going to write again. We need to get all the y's to the left and all the x's uh, to the right. So, remember, I have dx over here. Now, how am I going to do that? That cos y... I'm going to bring it to the left through division only, okay, multiplication, division only for normal mass. So when I divide by cos y, I'm going to get 1 over cos y, but they've given us this on purpose because they want us to write it as sec. So this will become sec y, dy, and then the cos x becomes sec x, dx. And now we can integrate those. Now we know what the result is, but here it has k. That's just the coefficient of the angle. The coefficient of the angle here is 1. The coefficient of the angle here is 1. So, here we're going to get 1 over 1. We don't even need to write it. We're just going to get ln of. Now, you guys should know me well enough by now. If not, you need to go back to my previous videos. And on my TikTok, Neil does maths, where I have tons of these. I always put the constant of integration inside ln. So, we're going to get ln of a lots of tan of here. We have k is 1. So when k is 1, we get theta over 2. But remember, guys, the angle in this case is y. So we get y over 2 plus pi over 4. Just take a minute to digest that. <laughs> to di digest that. So k is 1. There's no coefficient. The angle in this case is y. k is 1, remember? Now, with sec, x is the exact same thing, except we don't have any more constant of integration is just tan of x over 2 plus pi over 4. Now we need to do our substitutions to find our constant of integration. When x is 0, y is pi. x is 0, y is pi. What do we get? Now when y is pi, we're going to get pi over 2 plus pi over 4. So we get ln of a lots of tan of 3 pi over 4 is ln of tan. Now here x is 0, so we just get pi over 4. So we get ln of tan of 3 pi over 4 is minus 1. So you get negative a is ln of 1. Ln of 1 is 0. Okay. Now ln of the modulus of a negative. Yeah, that just becomes positive. So we just have a is e to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, so if I was to backtrack here, guys, a is just 1, and then we get our solution, don't we? Okay? All right. Just to save some space, I'm going to remove this, and let's just change this a to being 1, and continue with our problemo. So you get modulus ln. All right, bi, what's going on? Show that the relationship between x and y is expressed as this. All right, that just means solve for x and y. But there's two solutions for some reason. Let's uh, check it out why that's the case. Now, the first thing we should be doing is getting rid of ln by doing e to the power both sides. But the modulus does not disappear. We have to respect the domain and range of that original function. Now, how do we solve these 
modulus functions? Well, there's the way I would tell my students to do this, which is to draw the graphs. Or we could think of this as the purely algebraic way and say, look, if you have, for example, modulus x is 2, if you were to sketch that, you get two solutions, 2 and minus 2. Okay, so you can say x is 2 or minus 2. Yeah, even if you put a modulus around this, it wouldn't have made a difference. Okay, but you're saying this equals plus or minus this. And we can apply the same logic here. We can say this equals plus or minus this. All right, and that's what I'm going to do. Because you're not going to sketch that tan graph and show that it comes above the x axis and reflect it and all that stuff. So the first solution is when tan of y over 2 plus pi over 4 equals the positive version of this. Okay, then we're going to do inverse tan of both sides. And then this is where a lot of students get stuck. They're like, okay, what do I do next? Well, I'll tell you what, mate. They look at the solution, they wonder, where does n even come from? Yeah, where's this n even coming from? Well, Remember the tan graph cycles every 180 degrees if you're in degrees and pi if you're in radians. Just like cos and sine cycle every 2 pi or 360 degrees, tan cycles every pi. So to find another solution, we could add pi. We can add 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. Here, I'm just going to say n pi, where n is an integer. Okay, because you can go backwards as well. Now, another thing that happens is the pi over 4 is cancel, and we can times through by 2. y is x, so timesing through by 2, that goes, and we get our 2n pi, so plus 2n pi. Now, the second way, we need to think, remember I said this can equal this, or this can equal the negative of this. So tan of y over 2 plus pi over 4 is the negative of tan x over 2 plus pi over 4. Now, we cannot just inverse tan on both sides because that minus is in the way. Now, here we need to establish that tan is what's known as an odd function. What does it mean by an odd function? Here's my tan graph. Uh, forgive me for that. But say we have 45 degrees, it's just easier to explain with uh, degrees. And here's minus 45 degrees. Now, tan of minus 45 degrees is minus 1. So it's known as an odd function because, I'm going to save your eyes, because if you take the positive version of tan and you rotate it 180 degrees, you get the negative version. Now, what does that mean? It means if you have tan of negative x, so tan of some negative angle, it's just the same as doing the negative of the positive angle. Negative tan of the positive angle. For example, like the graph, tan of minus 45 degrees, yeah, tan of this is minus 1, right? That's just the negative of tan of 45. Yeah, 45 is 1, you just do the negative of that. That shows that rotation of 180 degrees. So, the negative tan of this angle, the negative tan of this angle is just the same as tan of, just negate the angle. Yes, yeah, so that minus just goes inside. So that minus just goes inside. Okay, so it's an odd function. And now we can just do the same thing we did in the example above, uh, over here. So we have tan of y over 2 plus pi over 4 is tan of the negative of all this, minus x over 2 minus pi over 4. Then we're going to do inverse tan. Cancel. So we get y over 2 plus pi over 4 is negative x over 2, negative pi over 4, plus n pi. Uh, the negative pi over 4 I'm going to bring over here, because they collect and they mix it pi over 2, which is good, because then we can just times through by 2, isn't it? Okay, you would obviously write that in an extra step. So timesing through by 2, we get y is negative x, negative x minus pi, plus 2n pi, which when we factorize out pi, we get that other solution, which I'm just going to write down. Okay, but you saw my working, yeah? Ah, uh, 
You saw my work in, yeah? So we got y is minus x plus 2n minus 1 pi. All right, that's bi, ii, captain. Hence, deduce that the particular solution to part a is this. Okay, now what's this to do with? It does say the, so these are the two possible solutions. Now, these are obviously generic because they're in terms of n where n is an integer. But we can look back at our boundary condition. That boundary condition is going to have to satisfy one of these. Okay, now which one is it going to be? x is 0, y is pi. Pi, pi. It's going to have to satisfy one of these equations. But remember, n is an integer. Is it possible for it to equal this first equation? Well, if you substitute x is 0 and y is pi, yeah, you're going to get pi equals 2n pi. n would have to be 1 half. Well, that's not possible because that's not an integer. Okay? So, if I was to write that down, so if we have x is 0, y is, uh, y is pi, into the first equation, we would get pi is 0 plus 2n pi. n is, uh, it would be a half, right? Which is not possible, as n is an integer. So it has to go into the second one. If we sub into the second one, into equation 2, we would get uh, y is pi is negative 0, which is just 0, is 2n minus 1 pi. Now what does n have to be then? The coefficient here is 1. Yeah, so when 2n minus 1 equals 1, n is just 1. So this just gives us n is 1. And then we are basically uh, done, aren't we? So uh, when n is 1, when n is 1, we're going to get y is minus x plus when n is 1, remember this was just pi, isn't it? So therefore, when we sum it back in, y is minus x plus pi, okay, when n is 1. Which in the question, they just put the positive one first, pi minus x. And that's our solution. And that is how we get a beautiful 10 marks. So there's a lot of concepts in here. Yeah, I don't want to hear no yapping saying this is actually easy. There's a lot of things that go into this question. It's much harder than you think. And getting thrown this kind of question in the exam will throw off a lot of students. So guys, if you learned something today, I'd appreciate if you hit that like button. Subscribe for more content like this. If you want to submit questions and discuss more maths, head to my Loon Gang Reddit. And if you want to know more about my full A-level maths courses, then there is a link in the description. See you guys in the next video. Nice.